My name is Josh Griffin, um, and I have Kleinfelter syndrome. My name is Matthew Engdahl, and I have 47XXY. Well, my name is Peter Sewald. I'm XXY. I was diagnosed at age 44, rather late. Uh, my name is Matthew Lewis, and uh, I have 47XYY. Are you going to put some fish in it? No. No? What are you going to put in the ocean? I don't know. I don't know. Well, you think of what you want. I talk to Seaweed. Yeah. Seaweed. That would be a good thing to put in the ocean. My name is Emily Hansen. And what's your condition? My condition is that I have a trisomy X. My name's Kimberly. My daughter is Charlotte. She is seven. And she has trisomy X. My name is Amy. And my daughter Lainey has trisomy X. She has an extra X chromosome. Growing up, I saw a lot of doctors, uh, psychologists, psychiatrists. I, they said I had ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia. My whole life I had had anger issues and I had weight issues and I had a whole bunch of different things that were wrong with me. I didn't know where it was coming from, what was going and what it had to deal with. So knowing that this was the uh, cause or part of the cause really just made me feel like, okay, that was so you know helpful. Actually, when I first heard this diagnosis, I was in serious denial. Um, I didn't really want to believe it. I mean, I kind of thought to myself, you know, this doesn't change who I am. I'm still whoever I was. But um, so I sort of put it in the back of my mind for the longest time, and it really didn't start to kick back in until halfway through college when I really realized that there were certain steps I needed to do in order to get through life with my disabilities. Well, first off, I'm an alcoholic, mm -hmm. non-practicing, and been so for 25 years and it's been 25 years since I've been diagnosed. Apparently I was diagnosed at birth but my parents did not tell me until I was 18. My son was diagnosed when he was um, 10 and just about to turn 11 years old. I was diagnosed at age 34 um, prior to and I, that's when I started getting testosterone treatment and prior to uh, uh, that I uh, had a rather tumultuous life uh, due to l low testosterone. When I was born, my parents knew that I had triple X from the doctors. Okay. So they kept it from me until I was 14. How did you feel about that? Well, I, I felt protected. At the same time, I wish maybe they would have told me so I wasn't living with something that I didn't know about myself. Um, I was actually diagnosed prenatally. Um, my parents actually, because my sister has Down syndrome, my parents actually were told to get a test prenatally for me when I was born. Um, and so they actually knew right away. However, they didn't tell me until I was about 22 years old. They said I was of advanced maternal age that I should have an amniocentesis to look for chromosomal defects more along the lines of um, Down syndrome, that kind of thing. Um, and I didn't want to know the sex because she's my only child and they called me up on the phone driving in the car and told me that there was an issue with the pregnancy and that um, they had to tell me the sex of the child in order to tell me what was wrong. So, Not something you want to hear when you're 16 weeks pregnant. I was out to lunch with my five-year-old son and I got a call from my OB and she said that my child had an extra X and she didn't know what that meant. And having worked um, with children and adults with developmental and physical disabilities through my entire career, the fact that I didn't know what that meant it was devastating as well because I I couldn't picture anything. It is important that they know immediately that they're not alone. I, you know, as a parent of a child with trisomy X and being involved with KSNA and coming to the conferences, uh, that is my goal moving forward is to make sure that when a, a, a parent goes and gets this diagnosis, they are immediately connected to the community so that they know they're not alone. Um, we know these girls and young women are out there 
and we need to bring them together so that they can be supports for one another. KSMA has helped me and my family since day one. They were the first organization that we were in touch with um, some 17 years ago when my son was first diagnosed. We've been um, able to contact them to find out what the latest advances are in research. We participated in research studies at the National Institute of Mental Health. And then even here today, um, we're again participating in research studies. They provided information that I was able to take to the school system to help my son get the educational supports that he needed. And just being able to pick up the telephone and call someone within the organization and say, hey, this is going on today and this is what I need. And just knowing that I'm not alone. KSNA helped me by putting me in, in contact with other people like me. There is help. There is answers out there. Are, there are people like me that, you know, that will give you answers that will help you. KSNA has helped because um, we get to meet other people who have the condition. And so my son can relate to other people because, you know, I mean, I know it's extremely common. It's like it's under one in a thousand. And, and so that means, that, like, pretty much... If you live in a large city, you know some other people, but you just don't know who they are. The things I learned here compared to what I thought I'd learned on Google and stuff, I, I was like, yay, you know, as I learned basic stuff on Google, and uh, my parents learned some basic stuff when they learned about KSNA, but the conference itself, I've learned way more. And I can actually take that back with me and give it to friends or family or even uh, fellow counselors who don't even know anything about it, and uh, so that way they can get more, like, informed.